Pillar Packets work tools uh, as well is, is a completely different when we compare it to uh, any other work tools at any uh, competition machine. For example, this packet is uh, 1.8 cubic meter capacity and uh, if we can notice this, the lengthed floor of the packet, uh, it helps us in two things. The first thing, it will, uh, it will give the machine more uh, penetration force uh, so the machine can penetrate inside the material to uh, it, when, when, when it comes to uh, the cut. The other thing is it will enable the bucket to be loaded uh, up to 1.1% uh, of the bucket capacity. If we say that this bucket is 2 cubic meters, so actually the machine can uh, be, uh, the one bucket can be carry up to 2.2 uh, cubic meters, which, uh, which help us in improving uh, uh, the productivity of the machine. Uh, over any competition. Now we are going to talk about the electric cooling fan using, used in the new generation of excavators. Electric cooling fan helped us to uh, reduce the fuel consumption. Uh, we can see here that this cooling fan is not connected to the engine with the pelts or with the hydraulic uh, pump and hydraulic motor as, used, as we used to have in the past. Uh, this this uh, uh, co cooling fan is completely uh, electric uh, driven, so we don't consume any power from the engine. Consuming power from the engine means uh, a fuel consumption, so no power consumed, so no fuel consumes. This helps us to reduce the fuel consumption from the engine. One more advantage in this electric control fan is we uh, now we have a standard advantage which is the reverse the fan direction. And when we reverse the fan direction, it helps us to push the air to outside and pushing the air will help us, will help us to clean all the radiators uh, of, the, of the machine and this prevent the heat buildup for the engine system and the hydraulic system and also it will help us to uh, uh, increase the lifetime of the radiators. When we talk about the maintenance cost and how we uh, reduce the maintenance cost in these new excavators, uh, as we mentioned before, we don't have a pilot oil, we don't have a case drain oil, and we have here only uh, the main return uh, filter for the hydraulic system. In the other machines in, or in the other excavators, we usually change the pilot oil and the case drain oil at 500 hours operating hours. And the main filters, we, we change it at 2000 hours. So this machine, we have only one hydraulic oil filter. And this hydraulic oil filter is changed at 3,000 hours. So with the simple calculations, when we say at 3,000 hours, with the new excavators, we change only one hydraulic filter. And with the other excavators, we change around 13 hydraulic filters. So this is a big advantage when we talk about in terms of operating cost. Uh, the operator in the morning, when he do perform the walk around, he don't need to go up to the engine to check the oil level because he has here, this is the stick, it for engine uh, oil check. And also we have here the engine oil filter. So it's easy access from the ground position. And this is very, very important for the safety. We have also here the uh, fuel filters and it's reachable from the ground position as well. And these fuel filters has been improved with, uh, in terms of the internal design because we have uh, uh, enlarged uh, the space of, of the area contact between the fuel and the filter paper itself, which helped us to, uh, to, to enable us for, for a better uh, filtration. Something else in the hydro, the, uh, the fuel filters, we have discussed a lot of cues to reduce the fuel consumption. So when we reduce the fuel consumption, it means reducing the need for the filtration. So when we reduce the need for the filtration, it means extend the lifetime of the filter. Uh, I'm not going to say that we can change this uh, fuel filter at 1000 hours or at 500 hours or whatever. I'm saying that we have duplicated the lifetime or the intervals of the fuel filters at your site. So if you use to change your 
fuel filters at 200 hours, now you can change these filters at 400 hours. In the current totals, we can see here the total operating hours of the machine and the total operating hour of the engine. So it has 10.5 hour operating, 10.5 hour we just rotating the key and we never stop, we never start the engine. But we have actually uh, 10 hours of starting the engine, 10 hours of starting the hydraulic uh, uh, pumps and 10, two hours, only two hours uh, in travel motor. Uh, zero hour for a swing doesn't mean we didn't make any swing. We already made uh, some swings, but uh, uh, it, it didn't reach one hour yet, so it, uh, it didn't count with us. All this information is uh, indication for the operation of uh, the parts, but what are we focusing more is the total fuel. The total fuel is the machine counting the total fuel that consumed by the engine. So I can make uh, like a daily uh, calculations or a weekly calculations. We can take this and we can actually uh, calculate the actual uh, fuel consumption of the machine. We have also uh, something very important which is the total idle, idling tower, uh, time. Uh, because some operators inside just starting the machine, uh, uh, starting the air condition and they are not working with the machine or doing anything. So it, it counts idling, idling, idling. Idling is operating the machine for nothing, consuming fuel for nothing. So I can have these readings and with these uh, uh, results, uh, with these ratios, we can uh, see if it's within range or, or not. So this is a big, very big advantage for the customer. He can control his fuel consumption. He can actually track his fuel consumption of different operators.